We'll just use another metaphor, because we need to find out exactly what is this, why do we have that, and uh, how does that work, in order to well, make some changes. Okay. So, let's say that this is your software, this is your operating system, everything else is your hardware, so this is your storage, your hard drive, this is your central processing unit, your processor, this is a device for measuring your vibration, and so on and so on, but this is your software. It is a rule-based decision-making system, and it even has a name, of course, like any other operating system, it has a name, and it's called ego. So, your ego is your software. And like any other piece of software, it has an input and it has an output. In this case, input is your senses, information that you are picking up through your senses, or through your imagination. And then this piece of software, based on some rules that are embedded in there, is creating a decision. Is that good for you or bad for you? Is that useful or not useful? And then it creates a vibration that your body will pick up and interpret as pleasant or unpleasant. Okay. So, what this operating system, this piece of software does, it converts sensory input, either from your senses or from imagination, into an experience of what is right now. Now, this is very important. This piece of software has no memory of its own. It's just a bunch of rules. And it's a pass-through. So, senses, these uh, rules, create an, uh, a vibration that will create emotion and thoughts and so on, that we call an experience. So, it is a piece of software that converts sensory inputs into an experience of what is right now. And it is a great tool. It helps us immensely to focus in physical reality of right now. It's kind of like a diving mask. So, when you jump in the sea, for example, or in the pool, and then you open your eyes, you will notice that the image that you are receiving from the environment is a bit blurry and muddy and so on. But, if you put the diving mask on, and then you jump back into the sea, you will notice that the image that you are receiving from the environment is much more clear. Okay? So, this is like a diving mask. It helps you to focus in a physical reality by converting your sensory inputs into vibration that your body will interpret as pleasant or unpleasant and then give you access to thoughts that are consistent with that vibration and memories and so on and so on. But there's a catch. <laughs> catch is that this is an evolutionary mechanism. And its primary objective is your survival. So, when we say that it will create a vibration based on rules that are stored, that some situation that you are picking either through your senses or from your imagination is useful or not useful. The question remains, useful for what? And the answer is useful for your survival. It is its primary objective to perceive reality as it is right now. It has nothing to do with future and past and then give you well, info about is that situation useful for your survival primarily. Okay? And when we are born, we, we all get version 1.0 of Ego <laughs> that has very few applications or services pre-installed. 
So you get an application for uh, while eating, or swallowing, breast milk, for breathing, for moving your arms and legs, for crying, and so on and so on. But as we live our life, this software will constantly update itself, constantly through your experiences, or if you want to put it that way, it will be programmed by society, by your parents and friends and schooling and uh, job uh, colleagues and so on and so on. And it is a brilliant tool and it works remarkably fast. But, <laughs> and there's a catch. This is exactly like your computer or your smartphone. When you bought your smartphone and you put it out of the box and you switched it on, it worked perfectly. It had only a few simple applications pre-installed like for dialing a number or contact management or something like that. But then you update it and then you add another application. In this case, you add an application called Toys and Friends and Family and School and Colleagues and Boss and Wife and Kids. And these are all completely separate applications because you don't talk in the same way with your boss than the way that you talk to your wife, right? That's quite different. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> These are different applications. And as time goes, this operating system of your will, got, will be cluttered with a lot of unnecessary rules and applications that maybe served you once before, but not anymore and you need to find them and delete them or replace them with application that's doing better job or job more to your liking. Because, you see, this application is wired for your survival. It doesn't take into account all the things that you know or you wish for. So, for example, when you see a cake, this guy here will say, mmm, cake, great, good, pleasant feeling, eat it, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> because it is wired for your survival, cake equals sugar equals energy equals good for your survival. It doesn't care about your wish of being slimmer or um, prettier or healthier, it just takes care of your own survival. And just put yourself in its shoes for a moment. So let's say that you've been given a task to take care of some biological entity. So you get to walk with that biological entity <laughs> and give him or her constant advices what he should or shouldn't do, what's good for him, what's better, what what benefits him and what's bad, what he or she should avoid. Okay. What are you going to talk? What are you going to say to that, well, let's say kid? You will be constantly nagging. If your primary mission is for that kid to survive, you will be constantly saying to him or her, <laughs> You are not good enough, you are not smart enough, you are not strong enough, you are not fast enough, you are not wealthy enough, you are not likable enough, you are not pretty enough. Because each of these parameters, if you somehow improve them, will help your survival. I mean, being smarter will help you in your survival. Being faster, being stronger, being prettier, being more likable or whatever it is. So it is constantly nagging us. And these days, ego has a really bad rap. <laughs> to the point where Quincy Jones, famous musician, uh, defined it as just an overdressed insecurity. 
And that's certainly one way of looking at it. But is it really fair to blame our own poor little ego for being full of insecurities or for being a control freak? It is doing its job. It is exactly what it is designed to do. And what it is designed to do is to take your sensor inputs, both external or internal, through your imagination, and according to the rules that are stored here, your definitions and beliefs, gives you a full experience of life. Together with its own assessment of if that situation is for you useful or unuseful, good or bad, it will give you a vibration that your body will pick up and interpret as either pleasant or unpleasant emotion. And that is all that it is designed to do. It is designed to work in the here and now. Even if you are using your imagination to conjure in your mind scenarios that maybe will never even happen, your ego will give you an, its own assessment, according to the rules stored in its definition of this, of that, imagine, that situation that you're imagining right now. It has nothing to do with past, it has nothing to do with future, it is always in the here and now.